I wouldn't change anything about the model, the, the idea that the church is responsible for sending people yeah. and caring for them. And the, the best thing is watching new people in our church grow to love those people, yeah. travel you know, halfway around the world. Yeah. Watching that sort of bubble up yeah. has been a real delight as a pastor in terms of the effect that that's had yeah. on our church. Radstock exists to equip and engage local churches to start new local churches in the world's toughest places. Find out more at radstock.org. Well, welcome to our latest edition of the Radstock Missions podcast. I'm Steve Palferman. I'm Brian Jeffs. And with us is uh, the Reverend Mike McKinley. <laughs> Pastor of Sterling Park Baptist Church. Um, thanks for being here, Mike. We, uh, we're going to ask you some questions about what it means for you to be a sending local church. So our topic is, what when we say that local churches send missionaries, is that just semantics? Are we just kind of tripping over ourselves to say that's what we think the Bible says? Or does that actually mean something in reality? So what does it mean for a local church to be the sending agency for missions? So... Uh, Mike, tell us who Sterling Park has sent and where they are, and then we'll talk about what it means for you to have sent them. See, okay, who have you got and where they are? Where are they? Yeah, so we've sent a few people. Um, we've sent a handful of folks over to uh, Gostovar in mm -hmm. Macedonia to work with a church planting Radstock church planting team uh, there. So um, one of those folks is a, a seminary educated guy who was a part of our church and. Mm -hmm was looking to go into full-time ministry and we uh, sort of prayed with him and, and led him and uh, directed him yeah. uh, in that direction. Uh, we've also sent over um, a couple, so a, um, a married couple. He was yeah. a mathematician. I think she was involved in computers in some ways at the time. They were just um, about to have their first child, so no real aspirations of sort of full-time ministry, um, but they had a heart for the nations and wanted yeah. to see if they could use their skills um, to help spread the gospel. And so we uh, linked them in with the team there in Gostovar. Um, there's a, uh, a single woman there who'd been doing uh, some teaching work and had a, a heart to help with the team there. Uh, we also have um, a man in South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, so in uh, KwaZulu-Natal, he's a Zulu man okay. uh, who'd been a member of our church and was um, just as he uh, grew in his love for the gospel, became passionate about going back home where mm -hmm. the gospel's really, there's, um, a syncretistic church that still practices animal sacrifices and uh, ancestor worship, and that's what he'd grown up in. And so right. he was passionate about going back there okay. and planting a church for um, Zulu people there that, that wouldn't otherwise hear the gospel. Okay. And so he uh, yeah, was part of our church, and uh, we uh, helped send him back. Uh, he's nice. there now, and um, hopefully we're in the process of sending a few other people over long-term okay. to be with him uh, working nice. there. So we're looking to send... One of our elders is a man from India, from Hyderabad, and uh, same kind of thing where he's just passionate about taking the gospel back mm. to a place where he didn't really hear it very much growing up. And so um, we're just kind of scheming what it might look like in the next couple of years to send him and maybe yes. some folks from our church back to Hyderabad and um, to, to work there. So so that's, um, I don't know, up to five or six? Six. Six, yeah, seven if you can count. count there's two people actually in South Africa. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's in the last... 10, 15 years? Yeah, yeah, last, last 10 years, certainly. Yeah. Last 10 years. Um, if I was to ask a, a member of your church, they would say, oh, the, we've sent these guys. Is that is that how they describe it, that, that we've we've sent these? Is that a yeah. fair, fair reflection? What, yeah. And what, uh, what does that mean? So what does it mean for the church to have sent them? Does that, what, what responsibility do you retain over those uh, mission partners how much do you know about what they're doing day to day w what is it that you see as being your ongoing responsibility to them yeah they so they don't report to us in the sense of you know they're not calling us to ask what they should do mm -hmm. next week or anything like that we see a, a responsibility um to them and for them to to care for them um to so that that involves all sorts of things we have a uh, we have a uh, biblical counselor on staff who checks in regularly with okay. um particularly with the the folks of the married couples or the singles just to kind of see how they're doing. Um, so all the, Does she initiates that or they initiate that. Or... Uh, I'm not just... sure how that, okay. not sure exactly how that gets taken care of, but right. there, there's a clear expectation 
you know, yeah. that when, when we send people out that, uh, we want to kind of provide them with that, that check-in. Um, so the elders of our church see that we have a role in, in sort of caring for the, the folks that we've sent out spiritually. Um, so that involves, you know, Skype conversations, emails, prayer. Um, so certainly, um, you know, a lot of that going on behind the scenes, praying for the missionaries, um, just keeping up relationships. Mm -hmm. There's financial support. So we would be the, you know, significant financial partner for each one of those folks. So we encourage them to raise money and we try to help raise money for them in yeah. other places and through other churches. But, um, we certainly have a lot of that. Uh, um, we see that as kind of our responsibility to care for them, uh, as well. Um, so, uh, sending people over. So right now we have a team of folks from our church in South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, who are there to, to help with the work. But, um, what we find is that each time somebody comes back, uh, they're just passionate about the work and yeah. they tell everyone else in the church, you've got to go see it. Like you wouldn't believe what God's doing and how amazing it is. And you just can't picture it until you go. Yeah. And so more, that makes more people want to Once go. Okay. Um, we Skype in, we have a Sunday evening service that's kind of devoted to prayer, particularly for evangelism and missions. And so one, one Sunday a month, we have folks that we've sent out Skype in with the church. Right. So we put them up on the, on the screen and ask them questions and they kind of just check in and people from the church can say hello and ask questions. And then we pray for them. Just try and try and keep those, yeah. that sense of connection, knowing that they're in a difficult spot and we okay. want to make it, make it clear to them that we love them, that we're, that they're not sort of out of sight, out of mind, um, that they have a home. So if I'm hearing you rightly, um, your understanding is that as being the sending church, you you have a high view of your ongoing pastoral responsibility for the spiritual well-being of your mission partners, mm -hmm. a low level of responsibility for their day to day day to day actions. Because presumably, if they're growing as Christians and they're going right with the Lord, they are working out what they're going to be doing day to day, and there are presumably more local people who are responsible for what they're doing day to day. Um, surely that is like a limiting factor on the number of people you can send. So I don't know what the, the numbers are in your church, but the financial commitment, the commitment to ongoing pastoral care, the commitment to send people short term to help them yeah. is a, is a limiting factor. Yeah, certainly. So, I mean, our church isn't, isn't huge. We're probably about maybe 220 members, maybe less than 300 people in attendance on a Sunday. Okay. So, you know, it's not some massive organization. Um, but we've, I think we've found that the Lord's given us plenty of work to do. Yeah. And um, our our vision is to multiply churches. So even as we're planting churches in our own local area, yeah. the the idea and the goal is that those churches would be sending people overseas. So rather than seeing us as, let's, let's grow as big as we can to try and send as much, we're just trying to reproduce ourselves so that there can be as many yeah. sort of of us around the area sending missionaries and things like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we re realistically realize you know, it takes us a few years of, of sort of prayerful planning to send a team to yeah. India. So we're, that's why we're working on that now, trying to figure out the finances now, trying to figure out, you know, we're in the beginning stages of saying, okay, who, who might be a good part of yeah. this team? So I've got one more question, Brian, you might want to cut in before. Um, but what role has mission agencies played in that? So um, the people in uh, Gostivar in Macedonia, the people in South Africa, um, are they connected with a mission agency particularly or no right no yeah it's been really just highly relational so um so the team in ghost of our is you know, working with radstock um so there's which of course is not a missions agency but mm. you know, there's a network of churches and so you know part of the reason why we're not involved in life on the ground there is because there's actually a team there there's a team leader there yeah. an albanian man and uh, who knows the lay of the land. And so we, yeah. we are in regular contact with him as well. You know, we've had him yeah. over to build relationships with him. Um, so I've gone over and spent time with him. Um, yeah. but we trust his leadership, you yeah. know, on the day to day stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, for the, the men in South Africa, um, yeah, we've, we've sort of developed a network of churches in South Africa that are like minded. Um, right. So, and, and that's one of the things I've been able to help him do through, you know, my personal contacts and friends yeah. and, um, and so we've been able to put those things around him. So it's been more yeah. organic and relational. Yeah. We just haven't really found um, yeah. that missions, boards, or things like that are necessary. Is that unusual, Ron? Yeah, unusual, sure. Because um, I think churches can be intimidated, can't they? Uh, getting started sometimes. And um, and there's the idea that, uh, that expertise is uh, somehow 
sitting in an outside organization. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I say to people, you know, all missions local, you know, that wherever you are, you're doing local missions. So it doesn't matter if you're in Macedonia or South Africa or someplace, you, you get up, you can go at your front door and you, you do your mission. So, you know, so the expertise I always say lies really, like you're saying, like with this team leader and the team who've now accrued some experience 10 years in the case of one of those guys you've sent to your place. So, um, so I think, you know, we, we need to be careful about assuming that somehow there's some field person who might be in another country even yeah. who is the expert on a local situation because uh, if we turn the tables on that and said, oh, you know, Mike, your church is in the States. You know, we got this guy who's in Mexico. It's it's close by and he's going to come and tell your church how to, how to reach your neighborhood. Well, mm. maybe or maybe not that's going to be helpful for you because mm. he's from a different context and you're going to think, gee, this is our neighborhood. We know what's going on here. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing we have to keep in mind that this local expertise is very significant. Yeah, local expertise. I uh, have you had any input from outside? Say these guys done training uh, just in the local church, or have they done training outside of the local church setting? Yeah, so in, in different ways. So some um, some of the people that we have sent have pursued theological education in different uh, ways. Um, I think they've all gone through you know different sort of missions training programs. Mm-hmm. You know, short term you know, kind of get you up to speed for what, you know, language learning looks like and, yeah. you know, quick introduction to culture. So again, it depends a little bit, you know, sending, sending a Zulu brother back to his hometown. He doesn't really need to learn the language yeah, or the culture, sure. yeah. uh, sending, you know, um, you know, our elder who is from Hyderabad, he doesn't need those yeah. things, but, but realizing if we're going to send, you know, someone from California to ghost of our Macedonia, yeah. some sense of the, the culture and things like that, some a kind of quick induction into all of that is, uh, or introduction to it is helpful. And so we've availed ourselves of those kinds of programs. Yeah. Uh, anything that you'd say, I'm really glad we did that or stuff that you say, if we had it time again, we would do it differently with those. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I think you learn by doing it you know, what's important, what's most helpful. So I think we've, in that sense, you know, even as we're preparing to, to do, you know, Lord willing, this work in India, I think we have a better sense of, okay, here are the things that we can be really helpful with. And, yeah. and you know, here are the things we need to make sure we think about. And, you know, if we haven't thought about this, then in five years, it's going to be harder to think about it. So yeah. things like that, um, I wouldn't change anything about the model in okay. terms of um, the, the idea that the, the church is responsible for sending people yeah. and caring for them. And the, the best thing is watching new people in our church, whether they're new believers or people who just sort of moved to the area, watching them sort of catch the, the flavor of the church right, okay. and watching them come to love. So, so these people we sent out on some level, I, I already had relationships with them here in the United States and I already yeah, loved yeah. them. Um, but watching new people come in who've never met them grow to love those people, yeah. travel, you know, halfway around the world, spend their vacation with them and come back and they're, they're telling me how we can be better care, you know, so yeah. watching that sort of bubble up, um, yeah. has been a real delight as a pastor in terms of the effect that that's had yeah. on our church. Far better, I think, than, um, you know, if we chose another model and just sort of farmed this work out to yeah. a missions agency. Have you said no to anybody in church? So has anyone come to you and said, Hey, you know, you were sending these people to Gostivar. I'd really love to go to, um, wherever it is, um, Will you send me? And do you ever say no? Um, yes. I mean, maybe not quite that. <laughs> you know, yeah. Probably wouldn't look and just be like, no, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. But we would, I think we, we, there's certain, some people have come to us with ideas and we've said, um, you know, hey, if you thought about this, this might be a better fit. Or um, you hear concerns that we have about maybe where you are right now yeah. and whether you'd be, you know, ready to go. And, yeah. uh, and so people are usually wanting that and open to that. Yeah. Um, one of the families in the, the Balkans, right, had an idea to go to another country in the Middle East. Yeah. And in consultation with your elders, they, they just said, gee, yeah, we'd rather get involved with this yeah. focus that our church is involved. We're still reaching Muslims. We're still doing yeah, yeah. these kinds of things. Yeah. So yeah. you did give real good guidance as elders there. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't tell them not to go do that. We just said, just stayed there. Yeah. We just said, like, yeah. if you want to do that, of course, like, we love you. We'll pray for you, that kind of thing. But we wouldn't see ourselves as sending you in the sense yeah. that like we're like yes this is strategic this is work that we as a church are getting involved in whereas if you go here yeah where the church is you know at work we're pouring you know time and resources into this you know we we feel like this is something where we could stay connected with yeah. you and, and they were they were um you know open to yeah. that so. 
Um, Mike's obviously an awesome guy. Okay, he wears his baseball cap backwards. Yeah. You know, he's wearing shorts. It's tipping it down with rain. In fairness, I wasn't aware that I was going to be videoed. So I was <laughs> okay. I've worn a, a tuxedo and a top hat with a monocle. <laughs> but. but is this kind of view of sending available to smaller churches, um, churches that maybe haven't got the same experience? What do you think? Uh, well, the team leader uh, of that team was sent from a church of, I think, 12 people in Kosovo. So a post-war poor country, 12 members. They decided he's got a call. Who are we to stand in the way of what yeah. God's doing? We're going to send this guy, who, by the way, is being trained to become the next pastor of the church. So yeah. huge sacrifice. Yeah. And there are other churches, aren't there? I think of the missionaries up in, in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, sent from a little house church yeah. In the UK of uh, 15, 20 members, something yeah. like that. So, uh, yeah, you don't have to be even as big as 220 or whatever to do yeah. this. Yeah. Because you're partnering with other churches, that, that helps. You can draw on the strengths of other churches in the yeah. partnership as yeah. well, which other churches do in the case of, uh, of, uh, Mike's church. And in Mike's case, they're building on something that some other churches in Albanian and a British church had actually laid some foundational yeah. work yeah. to getting the team started, but now, these guys um, really have augmented and really become the core of what's going on there. Somehow we've got to get past this idea that it's big agencies and big organizations that can do big things for God, yeah. isn't it? Like I, I think um, the call on regular ordinary churches to be involved at this level, sending people is 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 key. Um, yeah. So, yeah, great. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you for helping us out, thinking that through. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thanks,